welcome back. Here's a new VX Wheel Fall that everybody was so excited about. Thanks for all the feedback till now. Following the idea of my VX Wheel 3, that's right here, with the XR compatibility of some parts, not all of them, keeping the same shape, keeping some footpads and bumpers compatible, but making it actually my own design. It features my own custom rails. They're the extended one, fitting the big tire, normal straight rails. Those ones are angled 4.5 degrees in front and in the back. I can create different angles. I can play with my platform in the future. I also plan to make standard tire rails, but for now, the default one are the big tire ones, because I love this tire. It rides very well. The main thing, it's a VX wheel, so it features split pack battery design. The rear compartment is actually more or less the same as the VX wheel 3, featuring four packs. The front compartment has two packs now, the VX3 has one pack. So this in total now is 100.8 volts full, making it 24S 2P in uh, the smaller 18650 cells. In this one I used a uh, Molycell P30B, but of course any cell of this size will fit. It's just a one wheel, nothing more. Or is it? Well. It has a lot of power and a lot of other features. This is a beast. It has more power than a GTS and it has almost the GT range. So I think you don't need anything more. It's a good race board. It's a good travel board. It's everything you want. And because everybody was asking me, yes, there will be some parts available like the rails and the internal boxes and foot pads and things like that. Everything is published on Discord. so. Feel free to follow that if you need more details. It fits banks, rear one straight from the box, front one with slight milling that's gonna be explained. All the controller and the battery box are aluminum made, everything's milled, no motor printed parts. It's well water protected, you will see this in the future in this video. Custom foot pads with the same size of most XR foot pads, meaning I didn't try it, but any XR size foot pad should fit, with the exception of these two screws on each side that are extra, but you can also use it without those screws. Open top controller box, the same as on all of my designs, with the seal in between. If you're familiar with the VX wheel design, this is not that much of a new. What is new is custom rails, custom boxes that are now all aluminum made. This of course makes this design way more expensive, but this is how it goes. Two switches, one on off switch, on the other side you have the light switch because I used to have this switch in the handle but now with the mill box there is no easy way to make a switch hole here so I just decided to put the switch here and the battery display is still in the handle which is a nice VX wheel feature charging port is in the back because there was more free space in the back and it just makes sense because the bigger part of the battery is in the back and the BMS is in the back so I have two wireless less going from front back because the charging port is here. That's the basics. I think I didn't cover all of them, but we're gonna do it on the way. Most important thing is if you wanna build this board, you have to consider some DIY skills are needed. And I'm gonna explain the building process in this video. So you're gonna be able to decide if you wanna build it or not, depending on what you see in this video. That's about what I have planned and uh, I hope you enjoy it and I hope we'll write these balls together pretty soon. 100 volts, crazy free spin, this is without feel weakening. I don't even know how fast it is, doesn't matter, it's too fast. You don't need to go faster than that. That being said, let's get to work. Let's start assembling the battery. I have the 3D printed cases, six of them this time. It's around 400 grams for all six of them, including covers. Here are the cells. I'm using P30B this time. I just measured each cell's voltage just to double check. It's rare that you get a bad cell from the start, but uh, it's way better to check at the beginning than needing to replace it after the welding. So double check that. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details because the battery for the VX 
wheel 4 is gonna be built pretty much the same as the VX wheel 3. So I'm mostly gonna cover uh, the differences between each build and some hints and upgrades. Each case has marked positive and negative. So again, two positives here, two negatives here, two positives here, two negatives here, and do that for each box. You should have packs like this by now. Maybe it's worth mentioning the positive side is a tiny little bit thicker than the negative side. The size of the hole in the box mainly depends on the printer tolerance because that's a way bigger difference than just designing it too big or too small. So if it's a little bit tight you might wanna uh, put the negatives in, press it, then turn it, put the other two, turn it again, put the other two with the positive on top and the last one. And once you're done just double check the positive marked here is on this side, the negative marked here is on this side. Check this on each box because they're not all the same. This one has negative here. Don't forget about uh, fish paper rings on all positive terminals of the battery. I have a new spot welder, the K weld. It's way better than the Sunco. Be sure to use pure nickel and not uh, nickel plated steel because it's a big difference in conductivity. In my last video about battery welding, I explained to make the series connection first and then adding the parallel because the series connection is where the current goes and the parallel needs to be connected but there is basically zero current there so we are going to do it a very similar way this time but I'm trying to save a little bit of time cutting all the nickel strips by hand takes a lot of time so I tried using this it's actually hard getting those in a pure nickel version but I got it, I tested it, it's pure nickel and it's 0.15 millimeters so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to place two 0.2 millimeter nickel strips this time I used 0.15 last time because the previous welder couldn't weld 0.2 so I'm gonna try to do this and this is gonna do most of the current 0.2 and then instead of going across which is double the work of making uh, tabs I'm gonna try to use this thing which is made of this to add another 0.15 in the series connection and the power bridges which are more than enough with just this so I'm gonna try to go this way this time each time I'm doing it a little bit differently but we're all trying to make the best each time and uh, yeah, you can see it's a little bit wet that's because I cleaned it with uh, alcohol so be sure to clean all the contacts as well as the nickel strips when you remove the good weld shouldn't be easy to remove and is not easy to remove but once you remove it you can see it's making a hole and a piece of nickel stayed on the cell this means we have a good weld if your tab just flies off and no nickel stays on the cell then it's definitely a bad weld while if you get holes in the nickel strip uh, before you tear it off, already after the weld, then it's too much. So try to keep the balance. This seems to be well made. So I'm gonna go this way. Have the K weld set at 43 just for the reference, but don't just use the same setting without trying because every battery, every nickel strip. Every setup is a little bit different, so just try it out what works best for you. That's just for reference. I'm gonna go about this way. This is gonna be the first layer and this is the second layer. Don't do this stuff so much on the edge, I just failed here, but it's not too bad. Uh, don't weld in the center of the negative, 
sell, the rest is kind of whatever you want. So with the first layer now looking like this, in 0 0.2 pure nickel, and the second layer looking like this, with 0 0.15 pure nickel, I have a total of uh, 0 0.35 of pure nickel in the S direction, and 0. 15 nickel in the P direction, which is the most I ever had and I think it's more than enough So this is how it's gonna be this time and As said, I'm doing it a little bit differently each time. Be sure not to mix the sides here when there's no Exits for cables. It must be like this here where the exits for cables It must be the central part connected. I did not film the process of making the main positive and negative terminal of each of the pack as well as the balance leads and how the temperature sensors are installed because this process is absolutely the same as in my VX wheel 3. The only difference is there is one pack more to do but it's absolutely the same only the wire lengths are not the same but this is best to check when you are building the board to see the optimal wire lengths of each pack. Another thing I change I just wanna point out at this point is in my VX wheel 3 each pack has 5 pin connectors for the balance leads, the first and the last pack has an additional connector for the temperature sensor. I figured out it's better to use a 7 pin connector and have it all at once on the first and the last pack. So in my VX4 that would be the first and the sixth pack. And I just wire the temperature sensor on the end of this connector. And I think it's better than having the separate connector. But that is pretty much the only difference. For all the rest, check out the video in the description and you will get all the details about finishing the packs because it would be a big waste of time for me to film everything and edit everything again. Here are some pictures of the build, even if there is no video. Check them out, build your own, and see you in the next video where we are going to build the whole frame and everything else of the VX Wheel 4. See you soon!